I have heard of a land America is in real trouble. I'll mend our broken land and people. Only by full-hearted faith renewed. I was a people we once had faith. Belief in God and in God's ways was embedded deeply, even in our national DNA, we could say. This country was founded upon the ideal of religious liberty, with the firm conviction that Christianity is the one true religion revealed by God. Now, that's a matter of history. By and large today, the flame of faith is flickering and almost extinguished in the hearts of the masses of modern Americans. Another religious great awakening is our only hope. But how renew the nation's faith? Our Lord himself left us a clear clue. Religious renewal and revitalization must come by widespread rekindling of desire for the unity of all believers and a serious concerted effort to make this happen in our time. In the garden on the night of his betrayal, Jesus prayed earnestly to his Father on behalf of his sleepy disciples nearby, saying, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. John seventeen twenty to 21 What was Jesus suggesting by this request? Surely he meant that without the unity of his own disciples, the world might not so easily believe that he was sent from God. Disunity among believers is a major obstacle to faith. And that's the bottom line. We've got to convince the world, our world, once more that Jesus was no mere man. That the Nazarene was unique in all the annals of history. Jesus alone was sent by God to lost and dying humanity. John 14 and verse 6. He therefore has all right to rule. And under that peaceful, blessed rule of the Almighty, Christ wills for his followers to be united. In the words of his chosen apostle Paul, he wills that we all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among us, but that we be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. But sadly, we do not all speak the same thing and we are not all united as the Son and the Father are one how conceivably ever achieve this missing unity among followers of Christ? By total return to the Bible and the Bible only, we should therefore drop all unbiblical religious jargon, the language of Ashdod, and resolutely discard all the many fossilized ecclesiastical traditions that have accreted over the centuries by the doctrines of mere mortals. And once again, speak as God speaks. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4.11 Let's conscientiously begin to speak no more and no less than that which God speaks in His inspired word, the Bible. All Scripture is given by the miracle of inspiration. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 That inspired book contains the very word spoken by Christ Himself, by which we will be judged on the last day. John 12.48 we must therefore renounce every unbiblical doctrine and eliminate every unbiblical practice. That divine word, once delivered unto the saints, Jude 3, has never changed. We have changed, as was predicted by agency of the Holy Spirit. A great falling away from truth has occurred since the beginning of Christ's pure way in Jerusalem two millennia ago. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. For healing our national disease... We must make sound again the church that was established by Christ himself, Matthew 16 and verse 18. To make Christianity whole again, we must go back to the original religion of the book. We must restore New Testament Christianity. But how is it then that many religious leaders of our day reject the very concept of restoration? It's not that they agree in principle with the need to return to Scripture alone, but just differ on the details of how to do it. It's that they actually denounce as wrong-headed and unworkable the very attempt to go back to biblical Christianity. Yet it seems reasonable that if New Testament teaching is the divine blueprint for the church, and if religionists have largely forgotten or ignored the blueprint, the solution is to return to the blueprint, Scripture alone. But the hidden idea in the thinking of many who reject the restoration plea is that the Bible is not the final word for mankind. 
because they also hold that God still mysteriously speaks to them directly or guides the church miraculously through scholars, ministers, and other religious leaders who have lived long after the days of the apostles of the first century. Many just don't worry about the changes we have made, changes not authorized in the New Testament itself. Oh, that's all right, they muse, since God speaks to me as he once did to Jesus' apostles, and he has updated and edited his plan for us today. Now it is different, and that's okay, they suppose. In the churches of Christ, we reject that model of updating and editing God's timeless truth, which was once for all delivered unto the saints, Jude 3. We're persuaded that the Bible alone is the final word. It is an inspired, inerrant, and thus authoritative word. We believe that we will all be judged one day by the objective teaching of Scripture instead of the subjective feelings of those who fancy themselves as spirit persons to whom God talks directly today. If you share that conviction, and if you also decry the decay and corruption of our culture, believing that a wholesale return to Christian unity is the solution to the acute problem of contemporary unbelief, we urge you thoughtfully to consider our plea. The churches of Christ practice virtually nothing that most religious persons of our time couldn't also practice in good conscience. For instance, if you ask, what must I do to be saved? We can answer with the very words of Scripture, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16.31, and yet answer again with the words of Scripture, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, Acts 2.38. For you see, biblical belief includes obedience, Romans 6, 17 and 18. Also, if you worship with us, you will find us observing the Lord's Supper every first day of the week, Acts 20 and verse 7. Now, who among us would be conscience-stricken simply by doing that? Now, even if some think it unnecessary, they wouldn't think it wrong. That is weekly observance of the Lord's Supper. You will also hear Scripture read aloud and expounded in our services, and all agree that that is right to do. You will see us offering our free will offering. It is of our means as we've been prospered. You will hear our prayers raised to God, and you will hear us singing one to another a cappella. I know of no denomination today that thinks that that style of praise is wrong, even if they use other types of music, such as that provided by a 12-piece band or something like a small orchestra or even artists talented in folk music style playing on string instruments. Most who would follow Jesus can practice singing unaccompanied by the instrument in all good conscience. We can all do each of these things in good conscience. We can also call ourselves simply Christians and refer to the church by biblical terminology, and that is less divisive. It promotes unity. These are common denominators for unity. This is a splendid place to start. We can all practice the bare essentials of biblical Christianity and be united at least to that extent, and that would be significant progress. Remember the enduring principle of Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If we will humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, The Lord will hear from heaven and will forgive our sins and heal our land. Once again, the problems faced by our nation and world are severe. Even the threat of losing our very freedom is real. America, our only hope is a return to our roots, our Christian heritage. The only solution is to be unified once again as believers in order for the world to believe that Christ our Savior was sent from God. Won't you come by and visit with us? investigate our plea. You will experience an old-fashioned, simple worship service that goes right back to the first century. Stop by to worship with us at 3301 Business Highway 27 in Buchanan, Sunday mornings at 10 and 11, and Wednesday evenings at 7, and go to our YouTube page, that of Buchanan Church of Christ in Buchanan, Georgia, of course, and browse through the large number of video files available online. These cover a vast array of biblical topics for up-to-date issues. We also urge you to tune in Sunday afternoons on station WKNG FM 93.7 in Tallapoosa, Georgia to hear our radio broadcast titled Ancient Truth. If you're interested in enrolling in our free Bible correspondence course, get in touch with us at Buchanan Church of Christ at gmail.com. Thank you, and we would love to meet you soon.